Good morning. <laughs> I was thinking while we were praying, I don't know. I, God has never taken his presence from this place. It, so, Lord, thank you <laughs> for never taking your presence from this place, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Lord, help us be a blessing to your heart today. Lord, pour out your spirit on every single person who walks through and everybody who is watching. And I know that some, some people struggle with this time of year, Lord. Just pour your healing balm over their hearts. And bring your joy. And I'm excited it's Christmas because we get to sing Christmas songs today.
right. You know the, the, the motions to this song. So if it's the, your love is so high, your love is so wide, your love is so deep, your love is so long.
your, let your joy fall, Lord. <laughs> that, that laughter, the holy laughter we haven't heard in a yeah. while, Lord, let just... The joy comes. Let it... <laughs> joy comes in the morning, people. Joy comes in the morning. And it is morning. The joy is here. One thing that's been happening, I don't know if you guys, I don't know how you see this, but um, because there is a part of me that is partially prophetic, especially when it comes to nature, and when the wind last night was beating against the house, I said, and, and, and I couldn't go to sleep. I woke up and I thought, well, this is not normal because I am not a person who wakes up. That was Lauren, not me. So I'm going, okay, you have my attention. I was awake for two hours going, okay, okay, what, what, what are you doing? And Holy Spirit said, I am coming like that wind. I'm already here. The wind is just symbolic. The wind, nature always shows us what God is planning to do if you pay attention to nature. We've had extreme warmth. There's been a warmth from God. The cold doesn't mean it's going to be cold from God. It means that there's a change coming. The wind brings the change. And we need to just be alert to Jesus in everything we do because this change is not what we have seen or heard or known before. This change will be something that will hit you in a way that you'll go, was that God? What? What? That felt weird. And the weirder it feels, the more it's God. Uh -huh. <laughs> because that is what the end times will be like. So as we, some of you hate the wind, but I don't really care. I know the wind represents what Holy Spirit is blowing in. So let's listen to it, first of all. Remember, I don't know if anybody remembers, but remember we said to wait last Sunday. It's a waiting time. We didn't wait very long because we're not good at that. But it's a waiting time. And we've been waiting, it feels like, forever. But that's not true. And God is moving. And it's wow. I just want you to know it's a wow coming. Now, I have no clue timing. I never get that. I, I, I would be wrong anyway. So be prepared as we go into these next songs. Because I think part of this is what he's doing. As we come in to celebrate the birthday of his son, Jesus always does special things at Christmas. Because he likes us celebrating his birthday. Oh, I'll keep talking because she needs to have a drink of water. But it is true. And God is moving in a, in a way. I'm really excited. I have this deep excitement about what he's doing. Even though I have no clue. But I know the wind is telling me. So I let it touch my spirit. Whether my mind understands, I don't care. But I know the wind is speaking.
Well, if you thought the house wasn't full a few seconds ago, it definitely is now. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It's good to see you today. Is there anyone, if this is your very first time, if you'd like to raise your hand, we have a little yellow card for you. And if you take it to the person who gives it to you, she'll have a worship CD and sermon for you. Afterwards, anyone else? Okay, well, welcome, welcome. We're glad you're with us today. We are still doing the tithing under the exit, the box, the first box on the top. Put your tithes in there. Those online, you have a link. Please feel free to click that link and give. And we just welcome everybody who's online also. It is good to have you with us, but especially those who are in person because there's something about being together that you cannot do differently no matter what you do armory prayer is tomorrow night at seven o'clock in the conference room so don't forget that please come and pray your hearts out christmas concert is december 19th that's a sunday at 6 p.m there's a sign-up sheet in the back just ask that you if you're going to do something it can be a skit it can be a reading, it can be song, it can be a dance. You sign with your name and put what it is that you're doing, plus your, your um, phone number. We don't have too many, so I'm expecting many more sign-ups. Many more, or I'll have to be calling you. You don't want me to call you. So that is all coming up, and it is exciting time to be with Jesus. I'm just, I'm letting people, just as a reminder, Pastor Lauren wrote a lot of books, and this is one that he wrote, the final outpouring, the last great outpouring. Guys, we're in that right now. And a lot of Pastor Lauren's books, people, I, they'll write something online about, I miss hearing him. And I just want to say, you could read him if you get any of his books. Things that he wrote, he, if he wrote a book 15 years ago, they're not happening now, right now. And a lot of them are happening right now in this book. He was way ahead of his time. So, and the books are available at our bookstore, online, and also his music. A lot of the songs that we sang here, the Christmas ones, he wrote. And they're beautiful, as you all know. They're beautiful songs. But he also wrote a lot of our worship songs. So it's just something to remind people of. You know, he may, not, he may be up there doing his thing with Jesus, but he left us a lot of legacy down here. And we need to avail ourselves of it. And those online, the same goes for you too. It's very easy to purchase things and get things and keep what he gave to us going. So um, with that, Ryan, and may I have a couple of people come up and bless you. <laughs> Are you going to use that one or this one? <laughs> I never know. <laughs> Uh, Heavenly Father, we pray uh, abundant blessings for our brother Ryan Fontenot. We pray for an open heaven as he brings a message from heaven to us here today. Father God, help us to allow our hearts to be open and our minds to be open to this message that you brought for us. We pray a blessing for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise this morning. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we what? And be glad in, in it. Doesn't matter what happens in the day, it's still the day that the Lord has made. And uh, as Pastor Dave just got done praying, I've been praying and believing God for an open heaven. And what that means is that he hears us. Isn't it amazing to know that when we pray, he hears us? And not only that he hears us, but he is ready to answer us. Amen. Uh, I want you to go with me very quickly to uh, Joel, the book of Joel. We haven't visited there quite a bit, uh, but I, I believe the Lord has a, has a word for all of us. And we'll figure out what's going to happen as he does it. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Joel, the second chapter. I've been feeling something really strong prophetically uh, in the wind as, as Pastor Beth was just sharing about the winds. Um, and God's blowing in something brand new. Somebody just say brand new. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says that, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Shall it not spring forth? He said, I'll even make rivers in the desert. 
Uh, and whenever God starts doing something new, it presents us with this challenge to let go of the old, right? And, and sometimes the old is familiar, it's comfortable, and we know it. But this next move of God, we cannot let our preferences limit his power. Come on, somebody say amen. We can't, we can't let the way that we prefer God to do it outshadow the way that he wants to do it. Because sometimes the way that God wants to bless you is not in your comfort zone. Sometimes the father will pull you away from what you're comfortable with to see if you still trust him when things are a little bit uncertain. To see will you still love him when he's not moving like you're used to him moving. Or when your world is shifting and changing and it doesn't look like it used to look. And so the Lord is saying, I am getting ready and I believe what's happening in the kingdom of God. I'm already preaching. We'll get to the scripture in a minute. <laughs> uh, well, I believe that what's happening in the kingdom of God and what's taking place in the church is God is claiming the church that was rightfully his in the first place. The Bible said that in the last days that, that even the spirit of the age would deceive even the very elect. And I believe that for the last many years that we've relied on gifts so much that we have minimized the fruit of the spirit and we start praying for the gifts of the spirit. But the gifts of the spirit mean nothing unless they're rooted and grounded in the fruits of what it means to have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And I want you to know that even as believers, as, as kingdom ambassadors, we have a right and an obligation in the earth to decree the oracles of God so that men's ears can open to the truth of Jesus Christ. But in order to do that, we've got to abandon our flesh. We've got to abandon our own self. The apostle Paul was saying uh, like this, you've got to put off the old man that old nature and take take uh, this divine nature that we take on. As a matter of fact, I believe that when Jesus was crucified, and that's the central nucleus of the gospel, regardless of your political beliefs or your ethnicity or your financial class, what has led us all to the foot of the cross is the recognition that we need a savior and his name is Jesus. It doesn't matter who's our senators or who's our presidents or who's going to be in the political party. The Bible said to the prophet Isaiah that the government is on his shoulders, which means that whatever the father has allowed, he's got a plan for it. Say amen. And I don't want you to get distracted by the things that are happening in the world because we're in very prophetic times. The times that we're in, the Father's voice, if, you're, if you are prophetic and you can hear the, the bellows of the, of, the, of the prophetic realms and of revival and the rhythms that are happening in the spirit right now, I believe that God is speaking more clearly and with clarity than he ever has before. Because I don't believe that you need to go into the next season of your life not knowing what am, I, what am I saying? There must come a clarity of voice between you and God. The Bible says it like this. My sheep know my, and to a stranger, they will not follow. In other words, I believe that what's coming upon you is a knowing of the voice of God. You're going to know that Father is speaking to you so that it can lead you into your next decision. There is nothing like trying to make a decision and not knowing if it's the right decision. Raise your hand if you've ever been there before. If you've ever, you were praying, Lord, I, is this the right decision or is this the wrong decision? And then for those of you who didn't raise your hand, then what we do is we say, well, if I don't know if it's the right decision and I don't know if it's the wrong decision, then you get so fearful of the future so you make no decision. And then your life is stagnant. <laughs> Come on here. And that's the reality is, is you need people with you who will decide. I mean, because even if you make the wrong decision, at least you made a decision. Come on here. And so what happens is we stay in the valley of no decision, which is indecision. And the fruit and the manifestation of indecision is stagnation. So your life doesn't go anywhere, but you're praying, you're reading, and you're doing all the religious things. But there's no movement because the next miracle is on your movement. Oh, man, that was a prophetic word. And I think 30 of y'all just went over your head. It'll catch you on the way home. <laughs> Somebody say, it's on me. We're so used to asking God to do everything that he forgot everything that he was going to do. He's already done it. 
It's now up to us to pull on what he's already established, get out of his way, and let him come in like a mighty rushing wind. And I'm not just talking about in church. I'm talking about in your life. I'm talking about in the way you raise your children. I'm talking about in the way that you are a husband to your wife or a wife to your husband. I'm talking about when you show up in the marketplace and when you're out there doing your thing. I'm talking about the whales of revival hitting the house of representative. There is no limit to this coming revival. And it is unlike Pastor, like Pastor Beth just said, she could have just preached a message, uh, Cecile, but uh, it is unlike any other move that has ever happened in the earth before. And so what the church must do is posture ourselves to receive what's next by the willingness to let go of our preferences. Somebody just say, let it go. It doesn't matter if he brings another donkey in here to talk to us. If it's what you desire to do, then I'm willing to receive it. It doesn't matter if he brings a child. Isaiah 66 and 1 said, and a child shall lead them. It doesn't matter who the answer is wrapped up in. I'm so tied to the longing of more of his presence and more of his power. The move of God, according to the scripture, is only going to intensify in the last days. That means there are going to be Sundays that we may not be able to get through full praise and worship because charity and the praise team may have fallen out under the power of the living God and we don't need a man to orchestrate the next move we need the Holy Spirit to orchestrate the next move so that we can have the assurance that what is happening next is divinely sent by God as a matter of fact I believe that for majority of you in this room your world is shifting into a more solid and clarity a place of clarity and there is an assurance that comes with you and the one thing that I know about this next season as the Lord begins to show me prophetically is that there is angelic assistance you don't have to do it by yourself the scripture says that one angel has the power to destroy an entire city 185,000 people that an angel can destroy those wings when they begin to flap they, they flap so strong over the Red Sea that when the angel flapped their wings the water stood at attention and dried up the ground to bring Israel out of 430 years of slavery when they got over there and start complaining you know how we do he does one thing and then we complain about the next thing they got over there they said Lord the, the water is too bitter he said take a fig and throw it in the water and the bitter water was turning sweet then during the day they said y'all know like we do he said Lord it's too hot he said I'll be a cloud by day then night came and they said Lord it's too cold he said I'll be a pillar of fire by night and that's why perhaps when Moses was commanded to go down the Pharaoh and talk to him God said tell them that I am that I am, which means whatever you need me to be, I am that. And the reality is we rest in the assurance of knowing that he is. Joel chapter 2, I'm ready now. <laughs> and I want you to hear this word of God, not just one of the things that I think that uh, so many of us who are in Christendom or the kingdom can do, especially if you've been in for a long time is we begin to read this book like it's a history book. But this Bible is alive to us. That Hebrew word logos, which means the written word of God, rhema, the spoken word of God. Um, it, it is means that his, his words now become hearing to us. So I don't want you to just hear it like a history book, but this book is alive. Verse 22, I'm reading in Joel chapter 2, verse 22, and it says this. Um, excuse me, I want to go to verse 23, actually. It says, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Listen to this. It's the prophetic word. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. Listen to this. It's a double portion. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And he says, and the floor shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And here, here's the word of restoration. And I will restore unto you the years. Somebody say years. Years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I send among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. 
and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of new song. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Here goes my favorite part. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I think in one of the uh, mistakes that we could make as a, as a church, as a body of believers, is to assume that we are in normal times. One of the greatest failures of the church that we could do if we do not consciously realign ourselves with the heart of God is to assume that times are like they've always been. But if you are looking, whether you look to the left or look to the right or look in church or look in the marketplace or God forbid the government, times are changing. And not only are they changing, these, it's, this, it's almost for the church of God, it's the best of times and the worst of times at the same time. And so now we're caught in this valley where we're trying to figure out what is the way out. The government, you can't trust it. Just lean over to your neighbor and tell them you can't trust it. You really can't. Because <laughs> you can't. Come on, just say, I can't trust it. And I don't care about what people have been telling you. You really can't trust your heart. Jeremiah 17 and 9 said, the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Who can know it? Really, the reality is that many of us who got trapped up in some situations because we let our heart lead us and not the spirit of God. I don't want to go where my heart goes because my heart could want one thing one day. Huh? And then another thing another day. I need to be led. That's why Paul urged the churches of the New Testament to walk in the spirit. He said, don't be led by your ideas. Don't be led by your flesh and don't be led by your heart. Be led by the spirit of God. These times are changing around us. Our children at five are having full grown conversations. I'm looking at my five-year-old son and say, where did you learn this? How did, I didn't even know how to put adjectives and verbs and pronouns together at five, but at five, and not only that, but they can tell you how to operate every piece of technology in your house. I mean, DVDs that's been sitting there for 20 years. Bring one of your grandchildren over. And here you are. I don't. Where's the power button? How you do? <laughs> because the times are changing, and what God is doing is He's raising up in His church kingdom ambassadors, generals who have been down here. They've done their work. They ought to rest in glory now. Now it's upon another people. Now it's upon another generation, not to abandon the truths of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but to reconnect men with what it means to be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. That even without titles, without position, without church dogma, without our religiosity, we find ourselves as children, sons and daughters, away from the gifts, away from who I am in church. I am a son of the Most High King. And the reality is that's the place that the enemy wants to hit me is in my identity. Because if I lose who I know I am, then I lose all foundation I have to get to my next level at the end of the day you're not a pastor you're not an apostle you're not an usher you're not a praise team you are a son and a daughter of the most high God and it makes hell tremble and demons run because the place that they got kicked out of you're about to be promoted to and this is the hour that the Lord is going to release unusual favor upon you this is not favor to gain natural resources this is the favor of God that says the place is that the church has been locked out in previous paradigms heaven is now opening up and giving us permission to go into the enemy's territory and watch this he can have what he has because what God's about to release will be greater than anything we have imagined it's an outpouring of his spirit so that men can be baptized with fire and tongues again he's an outpouring of his anointing so that healing is not an event but a culture 
Come on here. So that revival is not something that happens that's planned, but it sparks up in armory prayer meeting. And you can't even get through because now we are not depending on the intelligence of man. We are depending on the intelligence of the Holy Spirit who sees all, who knows all, who is all, who knows no boundaries, who has no perimeters, who is not limited to time. This moment that we are honoring and celebrating the birth of our Savior who restricted himself. You you thought that the first person to be filled with the Holy Spirit was in Acts chapter 2 but the first person to be filled was Mary when Jesus climbed into her womb and for nine months restricted his deity so that he could legally come to the earth to the womb of a woman and when he was born King Herod didn't know what to do with him Bethlehem didn't have any place for him wise men came from the north south east and the west and they came to hear the entrance of the master but I want you to understand this when Jesus was born his birth changed everything and I heard the Lord say while I was in prayer this week that in the month of December as we honor his birth everything changes I need at least seven of you throw your hands up and say everything changes what I've been used to it's not working no more have you ever tried to hold on to something dead my mother said stuff when I was growing up that I didn't understand. And now that I'm older and talking to my children, I find myself saying it. Don't fully understand it, but I kind of get it. And one of the things she said when we were growing up is you're beating a dead horse. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I wanted to know, first of all, how did the horse die? Who killed it? <laughs> there were so many questions. <laughs> But I, I later found out that what she meant was I've made up my mind and nothing's going to change. This situation over here is dead, which means if you want something to change, it's not because you're asking me to bring this back to life. It's because you're willing to take the steps into your future to make the decisions that are necessary to get to the next place. Somebody say revival. Revival is not only coming to the world. Revival is for the church. Huh? signs and miracles and wonders I was, oh, I was out to eat I'm getting ready to get back into this and watch my time I was out to eat because I like to eat if you want to you know <laughs> you understand <laughs> I like to eat as a matter of fact I think that you get to know people better over a meal you kind of let your hair down a little bit and you get to know who people are good or bad <laughs> and so I was out to eat at Papa Do's. Y'all like Papa Do's? And I ordered the Mississippi Opelousas catfish that comes with this. Okay, let me not. Let me, let me, let me stop. <laughs> and I was eating. And our server came over. And he told me he was an atheist. I said, oh, shoot, Holy Ghost. Let me finish my, fi my meal first. And I got you. And we began, I said, well, guess what I am? I said, I'm a pastor. He said, really? I said, listen, he, I see, uh, he told me about it. if it doesn't make sense to him scientifically that there's no way in his makeup, he just hadn't discovered it yet, there's no way in his makeup that he believed because there are some things where human knowledge reaches an end and requires faith. If we keep trying to, you can't, let me, if you, let me, can you figure out how, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I've been preaching 22 years. I ain't fell off no pulpit yet. <laughs> Y'all not going to put me on America's Funniest Home Video. <laughs> can you tell me how water can turn into wine? Or how Jesus is able to defy the laws of nature and stand on it? There, th there comes an end to human logic. And when human logic ends, faith begins. The problem with the agnostic, the problem with the atheist is they're trying to figure out God in their own logic. Your mind is limited. It is myopic when it comes to the vastness of the God. I drove in on that God forsaken 270 this morning. You all been on there? You find out if you're really saved on 270. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You find out if you're filled with the Holy Ghost on 270 between diesels and people who don't know how to drive from California. I don't understand. Uh-oh. 
But everybody's coming to Colorado. I drove in on 270 and I looked at the mountains and I said, who else but God could design them in such a fashion that he paints the earth with the boulders of mountains? And, the, and this, there, is a, there is a surge of power and there is a surge of prophetic words that are going to hit the church in this hour. And I'm saying that it, it, the only person in the church who, who the, the pastors and the staff can't be the only people anointed. The Lord needs some other people. Come on, who say, I don't need a title to fill your presence. I don't need a title to be functioning in the grace of who you've called me to be. Because your children and your family members may never come to New Song, but they're at your house. And while you have an opportunity, I feel the Spirit is urging us. This, this book of Joel is one of the 12 uh, books of the minor prophets. Not that um, their uh, prophetic view was minor, but that, that really the Lord, th this is the way that they categorize these canonical books. And so here it is that the prophet Joel operates as a sign to, to minister to Israel at the time of the coming glory. He's preparing them for what is about to happen in their life. And he tells them in not, no uncertain terms that if you want what's coming you must be willing to surrender in the now if you want this spirit this outpouring of God's spirit and we're not one of the things that church can do is we can start to look back at past moves that the Lord has moved in the past and start to desire that and ask God to bring it again but I'm saying Lord thank you for what you've done in the past but I believe that the more that we get closer to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that he is pouring out his spirit upon us watch this and this is not just for us to become intoxicated in his presence and and lay hands on each other and get prayer at church. This is for us to shift paradigms and systems in the world to point people back to Jesus. But the first place that revival needs to happen is in his house. We've got to abandon all the things that are hindering us from moving in the direction of our destiny and position and posture ourselves in a place, new song, that we say, Father, whatever you want to do and whoever you want to do it through and whatever your desire is, I'm coming through. And so I speak strength. Somebody shout strength in this room. I speak strength to those of you who are here and you feel like not just on your, the pressure in your life or there's so many things that are on your shoulders that you're having to make decisions about. I heard the Lord say, you're not going to do it by yourself. He's going to lead you through this moment so that when you make the decision, you will know it is him. As a matter of fact, can we just go into, I'm prophetically feeling a time of prayer. Let's just shift. Is that okay? Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus, listen to the, as you hear the word of God over your life, I want you to, at the point of revelation, I want you just to worship him. Open your mouth. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would lift the burden off of your people. Your word declares in Psalm 55 and 18 that your yoke is easy and that your burden is light and that we ought to cast our cares upon you. Those things that you have been carrying, new song, those of you who have life decisions to make your world is transitioning your life is adjusting to a new season I pray now for the clarity of heaven to come into your ears your heart and the bellows of your soul that you would see what God's divine providential will is for your life father I thank you now that even as we abandon an old season we take upon courage today we take upon the bravery of the spirit and we stand knowing that what your desire and your will is for these people are going to prosper we thank you that you have sealed divine protection over our lives for us and our entire family we praise you that no satanic attack no warfare that's lodged against the lives of your people will be able to prosper but we thank you that in this season of our life we stand as vessels of honor to be used by your glory as the apostle Paul prayed in the New Testament I pray that God stir up the gift in this room I pray that in your belly there is an opening to another dimension of who you are I pray now in the Holy Spirit that you would stand in the grace of your call and your anointing and you stand in the foundation of what you're about to do I pray for your children who you are fathering and mothering and raising up I pray that our children at New Song would be have divine visitations from Holy Spirit I pray that gifts in our children would open up and they would be prophetess and evangelists and pastors and and preachers father i pray that wherever the spirit of 
doubt is, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. I release you from anxiety. You must go. I release you from worry. You must go. And Father, we take upon your joy. We take upon your peace. We take, Father, I thank you that the doors that have been op- that have been closed in prior seasons are now opened into the to your children. Father, I thank you. Even the times that they've heard uh, uh, insurmountable knows that this season shall come with prophetic yeses to your destiny. That the answer is yes. The king's heart is in the Lord's hand and he is turning it in your divine favor. I even feel that there's someone in this room today who's been praying before the Lord concerning your physical illness, concerning sickness and disease in your body. I speak the word of Isaiah 53 and 5 that he was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of his peace was upon him and by his stripes you are healed. Now lift your voice and worship for the next 30 seconds. Father, I pray your spirit, your grace, and your anointing open us up. You prayed for an open heaven. Now let's receive what he has for us. There it is. Father, open up the wells of revival in your children. There it is. Your word declares that out of our bellies shall flow rivers. Unusual peace. Woo, Father, thank you. There it is. Unusual peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Those of you who have a prayer language, come on, pray in the spirit for the next few moments. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come the more. Come with power. Come with the spirit of wisdom. Come with the spirit of grace. Get us out the way, Father. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Hmm. Hmm. Hallelujah. There it is. There's a refreshing in this room. It's for you. It's for your entire family. It's for your lineage. That's right. All in the balcony. The Lord's filling. Come on. Whoo. Spirit of expectation. We come expecting your hand, Father. We come expecting your glory and your grace. You can do it like no one else. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's a spirit of renewal. It's an awakening of the hearts of men. But he's doing it inside of us first. Just receive it. You don't have to understand it. Just receive it. My God. It's the filling of the Lord. It's the promises that the Lord has made to this house many years ago. This is the hour of a visitation that the Lord is going to pour out his spirit and manifest those promises. Mm. There it is. It's happening in us. <laughs> Glory to God. Lord, I pray that you stir the wells of revival in us. Even as the song was ministered, that we jump in the river. We jump in the river of what you're doing. We jump in the river of what you caused to happen. And in this moment, we release everything that's not like you. And we ask for more. Ah, we ask for more. As we get out the way, come in the more. Mm. There it is. They were in the tabernacle trying to go through regular worship customs, and the Bible said, and the priest could not even stand to minister. Mm. 
It's the former and the latter rain together. Listen to that. It's the former and the latter rain together. It's what he's done and what he's doing all at the same time. The worship team is getting ready to come, and I'm going to have them minister while we go to this next level of, of, of worship. Don't get out of it. Stay right there because we're just going to go a little further. Who's ready to go a little bit further? Say, take me more. Say, take me further. Those of you who will, and you know you need this refreshing, unashamedly, get out of your seat and come to this altar. I know when I'm on assignment from the Lord unashamedly, without question, come to the altar. Pastor Mike is coming, ministry team is coming, but while you come, come with hands lifted. I don't know if I can request a song, but can you do, oh, come to the altar? You know, If you know, oh, okay. Is that okay? Yes. Maybe. Maybe. If they can't, it's okay. If, 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 if you can't, it's okay. I just felt that in my ear. But lift your hands. Lift your hands. Wow. Oh, come to the altar. You want to help, lady? If you can't, that's okay, y'all. Oh, come. Something. <laughs> come on, lift your hands at this altar. Those of you who are led on ministry staff to, to minister, to lay hands, there's a refreshing coming for you, Pastor Inez. Lift your hands. I just feel the Lord. There's a refreshing coming for you. Someone just receive that refreshing right now. I feel like God is carrying you right now. I feel like he shows me you in his hand and he's carrying you. Mm. Whew. Come on, receive this freshly. As the Lord carries you, he says, without a shadow of a doubt, you are being made new. Whew. You're being made new. Men, receive the refreshing of the Lord. I felt an impression here today that the Lord wanted to bring healing, specific healing for those that have had COVID. Whatever variant it is, they've been affected. Either they don't have a clarity of mind, they've lost their full strength, uh, they've had uh, dizziness, uh, they weren't 100% like they were before they had COVID. So come forward if you need a healing if you need a touch and if you've had COVID in any way or if you're a primary caregiver for somebody that does have it because I felt like the Lord wants to bring refreshing and healing in that area for you I also felt like those people that feel like the Lord's touching their life for a healing ministry to be able to touch people and see them healed by the power of the Holy Spirit so if the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. You feel an impression that, that uh, the Holy Spirit's been calling you to a healing anointing. I want Pastor Ryan to come and pray a blessing over you and release that anointing in your life. So it's by faith that we, we respond to these words. So come forward. Aaron, the Lord wants to bring healing into your life, brother, to break the assignment of the enemy in your life that Jesus said that he came to bring life and bring it more abundantly John 10 10 so I just speak life to you brother every area of your life would be touched with healing that even the cancer would be broken in Jesus name we cancel that assignment from the enemy we break its power we release healing for you brother hallelujah come on we're in the river now we're under an open heaven. 
So we receive all the fullness of what Father has for us. It's an awakening. Ah, it's new wind. It's new water. It's new wine. Thank you, Jesus. 